Good day, Grade Twelves. Welcome to this next lesson on differentiation. Um, right, so we will be working on a problem yesterday. We were looking at how to draw a graph, and we were busy drawing the graph. We're getting there. But before we carry on with this, I just want to remind you of where we were at and what we were saying. So first of all, we're looking at drawing, um, sketching graphs. Okay, so we said, okay, we were going to determine the value of the y-intercept, which is very easy. We just have to look at the constant. Then you look at determine the x-intercept by factorizing your polynomial. And we would use the factor theorem to do that. Remember, we've covered that already, the factor theorem. Then it says find the turning points of function by working out the derivative, letting it equal zero and solving. In other words, we go f dashed of x, we find the first derivative, we let it equal zero, and then we solve for x. Then what do we do? We determine the y coordinates by substituting back into the original. When in doubt, substitute into the original and then you draw the graph. Okay, so that sounds quite complicated and long winded and everything. Okay, and I understand that. But if we start going through it nice and slowly, it's actually not that bad. So step one is to look at your equation. And yeah, we've got g of x is equal to minus x cubed plus 6x squared minus 9x plus 4. Okay. And what we know so far is we've said that the constant is 4, which means that the y cut is 4. Okay. We also factorized this earlier yesterday and we found that the x cuts were at 1, minus 4 and 1 again. Okay, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Now we're trying to find what? We're trying to find the turning points. So we found g dashed of x, okay, the first derivative, using the rule. It's minus 3x squared plus 12x minus 9. And now what are we going to do? We let this equal naught, and we're going to factorize. So four turning points. What do we do? We let g dashed of x equal 0, and we solve for x, okay? So we're going to say minus 3x squared plus 12x minus 9 equals 0. The first thing I'm going to do is divide everything by minus 3. So we get x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals 0. And then we need to factorize this. So if we factorize it, we get x and x. The only factors of 3 are 3 and 1. This tells us that both the signs have to be the same and they both have to be negative equals 0. Therefore, you've got x equals 3 or x equals 1. Okay, x equals 3 or x equals 1. And I'm hoping you realize there that that is the same as this. So yeah, we've, we've got x equals 1 and x equals 1. That's a turning point. Okay, so now we know the x values of our turning points are so our turning points. Our x values are three something and one zero because this was an x cut. These were the x cuts. Okay, so the fact that they were cutting the x axis at x equals one means that the y value there was zero. Okay, so what do we need to do? We now need to substitute this value of three back into the original always back into the original to find the y value. So we're going to do that. So we go f of 3 is going to be minus 3 cubed plus 6 times by 3 squared minus 9 times by 3 plus 4. Okay, so that becomes minus 3 cubed is 27 plus 6 times 9 minus 3 times um, 9 is 27 plus 4. Okay, don't panic just yet because this becomes minus 54 plus 54 plus 4. They cancel and it becomes 4. So this turning point is 4. Okay, so let me think. We've got the y cut, we've got the x cuts, we've got the turning points. Let's draw this graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise this stuff here. Unfortunately, I can't erase the other stuff because it's part of yesterday's lesson. So we'll just have to work around it, but that's fine. Still leaves us quite a lot of space. Okay, so now we're going to draw our graph. Okay, 
So here's another little tip that you might want to realize is if you look at your graph, do you see that it's got a big negative here? Which means that, what? Okay, let me show you, I'll show you what it means. Okay, so what do we know? We know it cuts at plus four, okay? And we know that the X cuts are at one and minus four and the turning point is at three, four. So basically it's going up to four and down to four and, and the rest of it's gonna go off, okay? So we can say that X equals one, let's put it over here. We've got X is minus four, let's put that over there. We've got the Y cut is up here at about four. And then turning point is X is three, two, three, Y is four again. Okay, there's the turning point at three, four. Okay, so if we look at that, do you agree that what are we doing? We're going, there is a turning point here. We've done something wrong. X equals minus four is a turning point, is a cut. I'll tell you what I'm unhappy with. The fact is that we should have another turning point then because we've got that this is, oh, that's a turning point. Yeah, I know that's right. There's something wrong with this turning point. I'll tell you what the problem is with this turning point. It's probably, it's supposed to be minus three, four. Sorry. Um, and I'll show you why. Okay, let's just check that. Let's find this turning point again. So if we do this, it becomes, I'll show you what my problem is. My problem is that at the moment we know it goes through four and it's got a turning point here, okay? It has to turn somewhere here in order to be able to go through minus four. So it has to turn somewhere here. There it has to turn somewhere, okay? So I need a turning point over here, which means I've done something wrong with this graph. So I need to go and check again. So let's find g dashed of x and fix what I've done wrong. So d dashed of x is going to be minus 3 um, x squared. Then it's going to be minus no, plus 12 x and minus 9. That is right. Okay. So minus 3 x squared plus 12 x minus 9. Now we need to let that equal 0 and solve for x. So let's see if I've made a mistake somewhere there. So if I divide this by minus 3, I get x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals 0. So that becomes x minus 4, I mean minus 3, x minus 1 equals 0. So that's right. So then maybe that value is wrong. which means I need to factorize this again. Okay, so you know what grade 12s, I'm actually gonna start this question all over again. So just hold on for half a second. I'm going to go here, and I'm gonna go here, and I'm gonna delete, and let's start again. I'm sorry, I obviously made a mistake yesterday, and it's made a mission of it today. So let's just erase all ink and let's start again. Okay, so step one was the Y cut, right? Was the Y cut, which we said was positive four. Okay, no problem with that. Now we need to find the X cuts. How do we find the X cuts? We have to factorize. So I'm gonna cheat. I know that one works, okay? G of one is gonna be minus one cubed plus six times one squared, minus nine times by one plus four. Let's see if I'm right. So if that's the case, it's gonna be minus one plus six minus nine plus four. That becomes minus 10, that's plus 10, so that does equal naught, yeah. So therefore we can say that X minus one is a factor x minus 1 is a factor, right? So this becomes minus x cubed, okay, plus 6x squared, minus 9x plus 4 is equal to x minus 1, and now we need to factorize this, okay? So x goes into x cubed minus x cubed minus x squared times, right? Last into last is a minus four. Now, the best way to do this is to go plus kx. So this times this gives you x squared, and this times this gives, actually gives you, mi minus times minus is a plus, it's x squared, yes. This times this gives you k 
kx squared, and they have to add up to make 6, okay? So this is 1, so that becomes 5. So what do we have now? We now have minus x squared plus 5x minus 4 is this bracket here. Okay, so now we need to factorize that, so we're going to let that equal 0, okay? So now it's instead of plus kx, we now have, okay, wait, first let me erase it, plus kx, we now have that that is 5x, okay? Do you understand that? Let's just check it. This times this gives minus times a minus is a plus, it becomes x squared. If k is 5, because x times 5x is 5x squared, and we end up with positive 6x squared. So that's right, it works, okay? Now we divide everything by minus, because we don't like the minus in the front, so it becomes x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 0. So if we factorize this, it's going to be x minus 4x minus 1. So x equals 4 or x is equal to 1. Aha, there you see, I made a mistake. So, <laughs> so therefore, our, turning our, cut, our x cuts, our x cuts are going to be at x equals 1 or x equals 4. That's much better. Okay, so now if that's the case, okay, that's the x cut. x equals 1 and x equals 4, am I right? If they, okay, multiply them together. 4 times 1 gives you plus 4 and minus 4 minus 1 gives you minus 5. It's perfect, okay? Now, we now need to differentiate this thing. So we go g just of x and we're going to use the rule. So we bring the number to the front, so it becomes minus 3x squared plus 12x minus 9. To find the place where the turning points are, the x values are the turning points, what do we do? We let this equal 0. So g dashed of x has to equal 0 for the turning points. Okay, why? Because that's the gradient, and the gradient has to be 0. It has to be parallel with the x-axis. So, we've got minus 3x squared plus 12x minus 9 equals 0. I'm going to divide both of these by, all of it by minus 3. So, I get x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals 0. So, this time I get x minus 3, x minus 1 equals 0. Much better. So therefore, x equals 3 or x equals 4. I mean, x equals 1. Sorry, I'm getting excited. So therefore, we can see that this here is also a turning point. Okay. Guys, if you ever get... Okay, the factors for these things were actually the x cuts were x equals 1 x equals 1 and x equals 4. And if you get two identical x cuts, it means it's a turning point on that point, okay? Um, it's two equal real roots, effectively. Okay, so now we want to find the y values of this, and when we substitute in, we get y equals 4. I'm not doing it again. We've already done it in this lesson. So now I can draw the graph, because now I'm much happier, because we've got an x cut at x equals 1. We have... Um, not an x, yes, we got an x cut at y equals 4, we have a turning point at x equals 3, y equals 4, we have a y cut at y equals 4, amazingly. So this graph does this, it goes down, goes up, and goes down. There you go, there you go. So that's what it looks like, and I'm much happier now. Okay, so, and then you always have to label your turning points. So in this case, it'd be three, four, and you always have to, that's four, and there you go. And guys, it really should be drawn with a pencil and with a ruler. Okay, so what did I say to you in the beginning? I said, if it's a negative x cubed, it tells you something. What that is doing is telling you what the slope is, if the original slope is. And do you see that it's the original one? I mean, if you're thinking about where it's coming from, it's coming from the upper left, okay? It's coming from a very negative upper left and going down, okay? If this was a positive, it would be coming from this side. So positive graphs go up this way and negative graphs go down. Okay, which makes sense because if you think of a straight line, 
your negative graphs go up to the left and your positive graphs go up to the right. Okay, let's do a couple of exam questions now, more exam questions. Um, to help us understand how to apply what we've learned so far. And then if we have time, I just want to see what we've got. We've got, no, we've got a couple of exam questions. These are typical exam questions. When I say typical, I mean I actually took them all out of all exam paper questions, uh, papers. So I'm not making this stuff up. It's obviously part of your curriculum, and these are very good exam questions. It says refer to the figure shown in the graph. So you've got f of x is equal to x cubed minus 3x plus 2. Before we even read this stuff, before we even read this stuff, what does this graph tell me? This graph tells me that this value here is 2. I mean, that equation tells me that value there is 2. Okay, so I already know what the y cut is, okay? Now let's see what it says. It says determine the coordinates of the turning points A and B. So we want the coordinates of A and B. So how do you get turning points? You find the derivative and you let it equal naught and you solve for x, okay? So let's do that. So I'm going to go f dashed of x is equal to, let's do the rule, becomes 3x squared minus 3. I now need to let that equal naught, okay? I'm going to let it equal naught and solve for x. So therefore we've got 3x squared minus 3 equals naught. I can take out a common factor of 3 or divide by it and I get x squared minus 1 equals 0. And then we can see, well, this is nice because it's a sum and difference of two squares. So I get x minus 1, x plus 1 equals 0. Therefore, x is equal to 1 or x is equal to minus 1. Okay, so therefore the x values of this point are minus 1, and this is 1, and that's obviously 1, 0, which is nice. But now this one, what do we need to do? We need to substitute back into the original to find the y value, okay? So we're going to go f of minus 1 is equal to minus 1 cubed minus 3 times minus 1 plus 2. So therefore this becomes minus 1, minus times minus is plus 3, plus 2, which is minus 1, plus 5, which is 4. Okay, so therefore this value is 4. So it says determine the coordinates of A and B. They are A is minus 1, 4, and B is 1, 0. Now it's to determine the coordinates of C and D, the intercepts of the curves, the axes. Isn't that nice that we've already done that? C is 2. Cool. But they ask you to determine the coordinates. So you can't just write C is 2. If you do that, you're going to get it wrong. The coordinates of C, let me just write A and B here. Yeah? The coordinates of C is going to be naught. 2, right? Naught 2, because x value is naught and the y value is 2. If you just go c equals 2, then you're not saying if the x value is 2 or the y value is 2 or what is 2. So you can't do that, okay? Now it says we want the coordinate of d. So d is where this thing cuts the x-axis. So what do we need to do? We need to factorize. So I'm going to just change color for a bit. So we've got f of x is equal to x cubed minus 3x plus 2. And if we we already know that when x equals 1, we have a factor, okay? So we know that this can be written as x cubed minus 3x plus 2 is equal to x minus 1 multiplied by something, okay? And that's not a big enough bracket. So let me just erase this and make it bigger. Okay, so that is going to be x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2 is going to be x minus 1. How do I know that? Because we've already found this value as a turning point, but it's also where it touches the x-axis. So obviously that there is an x-cut as well. So we can say, well, if x equals 1, that means that x minus 1 is a factor. Okay, and we can substitute in. So now what do we do? We divide in as usual. So the first goes into the first and leaves you with an x squared. The last goes into the last and leaves you with minus 2. And then what do we do? Remember we write 
plus kx. It just makes it easier. Now we want minus 3x squared, okay? So this times this gives you minus x squared. That times that gives you plus kx squared. And together they have to add up to minus 3x squared. So if I solve for that, you end up with kx squared is equal to minus 3x squared plus x squared, which becomes minus 2x squared is kx squared. So obviously then k has to be minus 2. So now I can sub put that back in there. I can go, well, that's nice. We can erase this. And we can erase that. And we get that x squared is minus 2x. Okay. So now... That's fine. So now we need to factorize this. So we've got x squared minus 2x minus 2, and we need to factorize it into two brackets. Now, again, we can kind of cheat because this is just touching. So what do we know about if we've got x cuts to touch? That means that 2 of the factors for this is going to be x equals 1. So I know that one of these brackets has to be x minus 1. Okay, and the other one has to be what? And that doesn't work, does it? Does it? No, it doesn't. Why doesn't it work? Because then it becomes minus times minus. Okay, so let's have a look at this, see if I've done it right. We've got x into x cubed gives you x squared. Minus into this is minus. We want minus 3x squared. Oh, that's why. That's not an x squared, that's an x. I did it wrong. Okay, so let's just fix that. Actually, this is a nice question. I'm glad that this happened. Well, okay, not, not ecstatic. I don't like making mistakes, but it's good so that you can see the error. Okay, what I did wrong was this. This is actually 3x, not 3x squared. There's no 3x squared. There's no x squared. So in fact, what I really need to do is rewrite this to go x cubed plus 0x squared, okay, minus 3x plus 2. That's better. So this is going to be going to be x minus 1 and then it's going to be something else okay and as you can see from the error that I made if you don't put that placeholder in it's very easy to assume that this is the squared and then get it wrong like I just did so be careful of that okay so now what we do first into first is x squared last into last is going to be minus 2 remember what we write this as let's go again plus kx. So this times this gives me minus x squared. That times that gives me plus kx squared. But then how many x squareds is in the original? It is zero. That has to equal zero. So do you agree that for kx squared has to equal x squared? Because when you take this across, the minus becomes a plus. And there's an implied one here. Therefore, k is equal to one. So therefore, I can rewrite this, and that's much better, as plus x. Okay, and now we can factorize this second bracket, this x squared plus x minus 2. And like I was saying before, since this is a turning point on the x-axis, I know this is going to be x minus 1, x minus 1 something. Okay, and in this case, it's going to be x plus what? 1. No, x plus 2. Okay, so but why? Because this becomes minus 2, 0. There you go. So the, let's just check that. A plus times a minus is a minus. Um, plus 2 minus 1 is plus 1. Minus 1 times by 2 is minus 2. It's perfectly correct. Okay, so now we've worked out the coordinates of D is going to be minus 2, 0. Now it says calculate the average gradient of f between a and b. So yeah, they're being a bit sneaky because they want to make you realize that there's a very big difference between differentiation and average gradient. And when you're working out the average gradient, you just use the gradient law or rule that you know, which is change of y over change of x. Okay, so let's do that. So they want from a to b. So we're M of AB 
is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And again, it really doesn't matter which we call 1 and 2. I'm going to call this 1 and I'm going to call this 2. So therefore, it's going to be 0 minus 4 over 1 minus minus 1, which is a negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. So the average gradient from A to B is negative 2. Then it says using the graph state, state the solution to f dashed of x is greater than zero. f dashed of x is greater than zero. Okay, so let's think about this. What does f dashed of x mean? f dashed of x is the derivative. But what is that? That is the derivative is basically the equation for the gradient. So what are they really asking? They're asking when is the gradient of this thing going to be greater than zero? And when is the gradient going to be greater than zero? Well, when it's sloping up to the right, because a positive gradient slopes up to the right. Think about that, okay? It's delta y over delta x means that it has to be positive over positive. Okay, so then where does this thing slope up to the right? Let's use, ooh, Okay, let's not do that. This is the highlighter. It's going to be sloping up to the right over here, and it's going to be sloping up to the right over here. Okay, so therefore we can say it's going to be for x is smaller than, and they want it greater than naught. Over here, you can't include this point because at this point, at the turning point, the gradient is zero, and over here, the gradient is zero as well. So it's not including minus one. So it's going to be x is smaller than minus one, or x is bigger than 1. You cannot include these points because at these points, the gradient's actually equal to a 0. Okay, so that is quite a nice question. And like I said, it's a typical exam question. Right, let's move on. Okay, so yeah, we've got something that includes a straight line. Okay, you've got two functions. You've got f of x equals ax cubed plus bx plus 2. So that's 2. Okay, and g of x equals minus x plus 2. Again, that's true. Okay, so now it says x-axis is a tangent to f. The x-axis is a tangent to f, okay? In other words, it's just a turning point is at minus 1. d is a common intercept, okay? It says determine the coordinates of point a. To, uh, okay, so it seems complicated to get the coordinates of A until you realize the straight line goes through A as well as this horrible polynomial. In which case, it's not so bad because we've got the equation of the straight line. We've got G of X is equal to minus X plus 2. And at this point here, Y equals 0. Do you agree? So therefore, we can say that 0 is equal to minus X plus 2. So minus 2 is equal to minus x, therefore x is equal to 2. So therefore, the value here is 2, 0. And again, grade 12s, I have to stress it. When they're asking you for coordinates, you cannot just write x equals 2. You have to give the x and y coordinate, which is 2, 0. Okay. Now it says show that a is minus 1 and b is 3. So they want us to find the values of this thing. They want us to solve. They've got f of x is equal to ax cubed plus bx plus 2. And they want us to basically solve for this, okay? But do you agree we've got two points here? We've got minus 1, we've got three points. We've got minus 1, we've got 2, and we've got 2 naught, okay? So, do you agree that we can say, well, we know that this graph works like this. We know that it's going to be x plus 1, x plus 1, and then x minus 2, times by some random a is going to be f of x, okay? That is the formula for this thing, okay? Do you agree? We've got minus 1, which is a turning point, so that gives us two of these, and this here is an x cut, so that's x minus 2, and those three there multiplied by, because at this point, we don't know if it's going to be like this, or it might be like 
Um, we don't know if it's going to do, okay, something like that, whatever. We don't know, it could be very steep, it could go, wee. Okay, so the point is that we know that those three values there actually give you your X cuts, okay? So just a second, I just want to move that. That was just horrible. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this out, okay, and see what we come with, okay? So we're going to go X plus 1, x plus 1, x minus 2. So if we multiply that out, that becomes x squared plus 2x, okay, plus 1, and then we have to multiply that by x minus 2. And there is a trick to this, and I'll show you what the trick is now. This here becomes what? We know that this is going to be, this times this is x cubed, then this times this is plus 2x squared, this times this is plus x, and then that times that is minus 2x squared, yay. This times this is becomes minus 4x, and that times that becomes minus 2. Okay, so what does that become? This and this is a. Remember that there's an a in front of this is equal to f of x. f of x. Yes, f of x. So this is a. And then it becomes x cubed, 2x squared cancels with the 2x squared, yay, plus x minus 4x is minus 3x, and then it's minus 2. But do you see there's a problem with that? What is the problem? The problem is that we know it cuts through plus 2, okay? So therefore, we can say, well, then obviously a has to be negative 1 to make this work. So therefore, we've got negative 1 x cubed minus 3x minus 2 becomes minus x cubed minus times minus is plus 3x and then plus 2. So therefore, a is minus 1 and b is 3. Woohoo, we've just proven it. Okay, so therefore, f of x is equal to minus x cubed plus 3x plus 2. Okay, so there we go. We've now Okay, so remember that. You actually got taught that when you were doing your parabolas. You got taught the y is equal to a x plus 1 x minus when you're looking at the cuts, the, the x cuts, okay? So just extending it into the poly polynomials is not a scary thing to do at all. Okay, now let's move on. It says find the coordinates of b, the turning point or the local maximum turning point of f. Okay, so that's really easy. We're now going to, what, what do we need to do for turning points? We need to derive and let it equal zero. We need to go f dash of x and let it equal zero. So let's choose another color. Let's go for purple. So we've got f dash of x is going to be minus 3x squared, okay, plus 3. And we're going to let it equal zero. So we need to divide everything by minus 3. So we get x squared minus 1 again is equal to zero. So you've got x minus one, x plus one equals zero. Therefore, x equals one or x equals minus one. We already have that one. That's cool. Okay, so we don't care. We want the y value of this one. This is one and we need the y value now. So how do we get the y value? We substitute back into the original. So we got f of one is going to be minus 1 cubed plus 3 times 1 plus 2, which becomes minus 1 plus 3 plus 2, which is 4. So there the value there is 4. Ta-da! Okay, now the next question. The next question is considered to be a level 4 question because it means you have to first understand what they're asking you and then you have to think it through and then you need to solve it. All the other questions have been kind of what they normally ask you when it comes to um, differentiation and calculus and that type of thing. Okay, this is new. It says they want the values of h for f dashed of x times by g dashed of x to be smaller than zero. Okay, so what are they really asking? What is f dashed of x? f dashed of x is the slope. So they want the slope of f of x multiplied by the slope 
of g of x to be smaller than naught. Okay, so we know the slope of g of x is negative. We know that that is negative, right? And they want this to be negative, to be smaller than zero. So they want the slope of f of x multiplied by the slope of g of x to be smaller than naught. In other words, they want to know when is the slope of f of x positive? Because a plus times a minus is a minus, so it's going to be smaller than naught. Okay. So that's what they're asking. So you can see why this is a level four question because it's actually kind of tricky. You first have to realize that they're talking about slopes. Then you've got to realize that we're going to multiply them. Then you look at the G and you go, oh, but that's always negative, et cetera, et cetera. So where is the slope of F of X positive? And the only place that the slope of F of X is positive is from here to here. Yeah, the slope is negative. Yeah, the slope is negative. It's only from there to there. And they've not included the equal sign, which means we cannot include these points because at those points, the slope is zero. The gradient of the polynomial f of x at minus one and one is zero. So it would be x has got to be smaller than one and bigger than minus one. At that point, the slope of the polynomial f of x is positive. The slope of g of x is always negative, so life is easy. So therefore, positive times the negative is a negative, which is smaller than zero. Okay, nice question that. I like that question. Okay, let's look at this. So it says the following sketch. Um, the following sketch shows the graph f of x is equal to x cubed and minus 7x plus 6. Okay, here we go. That's this f, okay? So f of x is equal to x cubed minus 7x plus 6, okay? A, B, and C are the x-intercepts. The coordinates of C are 2 naught. How nice is that? 2 naught. Okay, first it says determine the length of A, B. So what are they really asking us to do? They're actually really asking us to find the x-cuts of the polynomial. Okay, right? And then they're saying to you, okay, fine, now that you've done that, Okay, tell us how long that is. So they're really just asking in a roundabout way to determine the x cuts, okay, of the polynomial. So we know it's very nice that they already told us that x minus 2 is a factor. Because if that is 2, 0, then x minus 2 goes into it. Now watch carefully. This is the same as that previous one where I made a mistake. There's no x squared, okay? So we're going to rewrite this. We're going to write it as x cubed plus 0x squared minus 7x plus 6 equals x minus 2, and then we're going to divide in. So x goes into x cubed, x squared times, last into last gives you minus 3. I really don't have to make it that big, I just like doing it. Okay, and that becomes plus kx, okay? This times this is minus 2x squared, that times that is plus kx squared, and it has to equal zero. So what is k? Obviously, k is obviously two, because minus two plus what gives me zero? That must be plus two. So therefore, this becomes plus two x, okay? And now I can erase the red stuff, and I can factorize the second bracket. So let's do that. So this becomes x minus 2, and this becomes x, x. The factors of 3, x, the factors of 3 are 3 and 1. We want a positive 2, so it has to be plus 3 and minus 1. Therefore, the factors are x equals 2, or x equals, was this a plus? Yes, it was. Minus 3 or x equals 1. So this is 1 and that is minus 3. So what is the question? The question is what is the length of AB? It is 4. It's minus 3 plus 1. Okay, this is 3 units long. This is 1 unit long, so the length is 4 units. Okay, now it says determine the equation of G. Okay. The tangent at f um, to f at c. So again, this is a nice question because they're being sneaky. They're saying they want the equation of this graph. G is equal to mx plus c. Okay, wait, let's do it. G of x is equal to mx plus c, right? 
But what they're doing is very sneaky. They're asking, they're telling you that this is a tangent, which means the gradient of the straight line equals the gradient of f of x at this point here. So if I want to find this gradient, I actually need to find the gradient of f of x. Okay, so how do we find the gradient? We need to derive. So we go f dashed of x is equal to 3x squared minus 7. Okay, but now we want to know what the gradient is where x equals 2. So we're going to let x equal 2. We're going to go for f dashed of 2 is 3 times by 2 squared minus 7, which is 3 times by 4 minus 7. 3 times 4 is 12 minus 7, which equals 5. Okay, so therefore we can say that the gradient of this line at this point is 5. So we've got g of x is equal to 5x plus c. Now we need to find c. Okay, so what are we going to do? I would like to substitute this value, 2, two naught, into this to find where it cuts. So naught is equal to 5 times by 2 plus c. So c is going to equal minus 10. So what is the equation of g? It's y is equal to 5x minus 10. Hmm. It's actually a very nice question, this. Very nice. I like it. Right, grade 12. So that's it for today. I hope that you learned something. Um, I apologize for the errors. Silly mistakes. Um, and have a wonderful evening and join me tomorrow. We're going to carry on with some more. We're going to talk about points of inflection and we're going to talk about optimization problems, okay? In other words, maximum problems, which is important, okay? Because it plays a huge part in your exams. Have a great day.